back to the show. Ever since we learned that presidential son and world's most terrified smiler, Donald Trump Jr., had tried to earn dad's love with the Father's Day gift of Kremlin intel, Trump surrogates have been doing backflips to excuse his furtive dumbassery, with some even risking life-threatening paper cuts to make their point. <laughs> but would Kellyanne's sick rhymes convince Congress? We turn to Friday afternoon C-SPAN to hear Dana Rohrabacher articulate the party line on collusion, apparently after a liquid lunch at the old Ebbett Grill. If someone says to you that they want to give you information, there is nothing wrong with that. This is absolutely there's nothing wrong with, uh, uh, by the way, I am the chairman of the Europe uh, Asian and uh, uh, Europe and Eurasian subcommittee, including um, uh, emerging threats. You are? Jesus! Someone get him off it before he accidentally starts a war in Europe. <laughs> okay, you've slurred your piece, Dana. I'm sure the rest of your colleagues would like a turn. I would yield to my uh, colleague. Well, Texas. I appreciate so much uh, my very good <laughs> friend from California. Hey! Nice crowd you guys have there. <laughs> I haven't seen that many empty seats since Ted Cruz's birthday party. <laughs> Take it away, Louis. He says, tell Vladimir Putin, <laughs> President Obama's close buddy, tell Vladimir, my buddy, that I'll have a lot more flexibility once I'm past this election. Okay, yeah, I'll pass that on. Da, da, I'll pass that on. I know, C-SPAN open mic night sucks. The only ones who fulfilled the two drink minimum are the two guys talking. But trust me, it is about to get amazing. I, I can't end this week without expressing my grave disappointment with Congress. Ooh, 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 strap in, blast off in three, two. If you can join the military and demand a sex change operation, we will take that money that could save another member's life and we'll spend that on this expensive surgery to change your organs, maybe cut them off or add some. If you what now? Is there any Congress crazier than Louis Gohmert? I see my friend, good a friend as I got here in Washington. Uh, I yield to my friend Steve King. I thank the gentleman from Texas for yielding, and I have no better friend in this city either, or this country for that matter. I yield to my such an awesome best friend, Steve. I love you so much. This is full frontal's version of summer fun. <gasps> Watching sozzled lawmakers rant to an empty chamber about other people's genitals. <gasps> Go on, Steve, speech like nobody's watching. They will line up at the recruiter's office, and they'll go into the military. We'll cut them up and remake them into something different to the tune of $3.5 or $9 billion. Their only purpose was to get the free surgery. OK, 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 a lot to unpack there. First, the only way gender reassignment surgery costs $9 billion is if the equipment were made by Lockheed Martin, which it's not, I hope. The V-35 is way over budget, doesn't even work. Second, Steve thinks people would sign up for the military, leave their families, go through basic training, and risk death in a war zone just to get free surgery? Bitch, that is not free. That is a lot of fucking work. If you're willing to put your life on the line for a country that talks about you like that, have the surgery. You earned it. <laughs> to, yeah. to help me understand what the fuck these two are talking about, I asked my graphics team to provide some visual aids. Back in the 16th century and the 17th century, when the Ottoman Empire and the Muslim armies were sweeping across the countryside, and whoever they captured, they pressed into slavery. They did reassignment surgery on those slaves that they captured that they had put into their Janissary troops. They found out when they put them out in the field to do battle against the enemy that they didn't have the testosterone to take on the fight. They finally realized, 
I guess we're going to have to stop turning these men into eunuchs. That's a lesson of the military, the Ottoman military from two, three, four hundred years ago. No wonder Steve doesn't like gender reassignment surgery if he thinks it's a Muslim running up to you and hacking your dick off without your consent. <laughs> Having vividly described castration for six minutes, King passed the baton back to Gomert, who ran it straight back to the 17th century. King Jan Sobieski, who came to the aid of the Viennese people, <gasps> they were under siege, they were going to be defeated, it meant the fall of Western civilization. This Polish king comes down, determined, gets cannon up on this mountaintop that no one who is in the two years of seeking a sex change operation and, and change reassignment, as they call it, could possibly help do during that two-year period. Mm. Trans-U.S. troops can't push cannon up an Austrian hill to fight the Ottomans. Well, shit, there goes NATO. I wish you had mentioned this earlier, buddy, like before the vote, which already happened. You lost, because 24 Republicans aren't transphobic history buffs. I guess they didn't know the Korean War only ended in a stalemate because of all the trans soldiers wasting doctor's time. No wonder that goddamn war lasted until 1983. Having nailed their weapons, Western Civ oral presentations, the polymaths of bigotry moved on to medicine. Dysphoria, if you look it up, it still is, um, well, one psychiatrist has said it means confusion. You're confused. It's the opposite of euphoria. You're not well, you're not happy. Everyone listening to you right now is confused and unhappy. And surgery's not gonna solve it. Well, actually, it might. We'll be right back.